it's a great pleasure for me to invite John to make some um, comments on sustaining water and the China challenge. Thank you. Good morning and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to the 2013 China Sydney Forum. My name is John Grill and uh, I'm, I guess I'm here today as the chairman of Woolley Parsons, I have a few other roles. Napoleon once uh, famously said, let China sleep for when she awakes she will shake the world and awaken she did. Her rise as a nation to become the world's second largest economy and the extraordinary phenomena that is modern day China is one of history's greatest success stories. It's the reason we've come here together today. Like with every success story, there have also been some challenges. I'm here to introduce a discussion on one of those challenges, that most precious and fundamental of all resources, water. Today, China is the largest consumer of water. Water is also one of the country's most critical issues. There are three issues, or three, sorry, three reasons why China has a water crisis. Firstly, its water resources are not evenly distributed. While China's north and northeast regions are home to 40% of her population, they are the source of only about 5% of her, of her water resources. Second, with large-scale urbanization and industrialization, China's water demand is expected to reach a mammoth 818 billion cubic meters by 2030. Approximately 50% of this demand will go to agriculture, 32% to industry, driven specifically by thermal power generation, and the remaining 18% for household use. This situation is compounded by the fact that recycling is not widely used. As an example, China's industry currently only recycles about 25% of its water compared to 85% in other developing countries. Finally, pollution from industry and domestic wastewater has worsened water problems by making 21% of the country's surface water unfit for agriculture. Water is now a top priority for the top for the Chinese government in the 12th five-year plan and is based on three goals. Recycle, reduce and reuse. These goals are set against a series of binding targets. Water intensity is set to be cut by 30% and the water treatment rate is set to be at 85%, all by 2015. To achieve these targets, China is investing in an estimated 4 trillion renminbi between 2011 and 2020 on water-related projects. Its focus is on putting quotas on provincial water consumption, introducing higher drinking water standards through advanced treatment technologies and plant upgrades, preventing water pollution through the, the development of wastewater treatment technology monitoring and the development of environmental services companies and encouraging the development of a desalination industry. Woolley Parsons is one of the leading global providers of technical project and operational support services to the major resources and energy multinationals around the world. We are currently engaged in establishing best water practices for the hydrocarbons industry globally, a, a move backed by every major oil company. 
Our experience in water management has also supported the coal seam gas industry in Queensland for the past decade. Specifically in the Surat Basin, our role has been to address the security and sustainability of water resources in the local economy of one of Australia's most productive and intensively farmed regions that relies heavily on groundwater extraction. An emerging challenge for our customers, particularly relevant to China's recycle, reduce and reuse policy, is the issue of water stewardship. That is, embracing all aspects of the responsible and sustainable management of water, including abstraction, discharge, treatment and recycling. Demonstrating good water stewardship will become a prerequisite to achieving and maintaining a social licence to operate, which supports a platform for sustainable economic, industrial and community development. Good water stewardship is complemented by continuously improving operational efficiencies, introducing water into green supply chains, perhaps one day in the form of water credits, and developing industrial ecological solutions and technology associated with water management and sustainability. One final area for thought around water sustainability is the food, water, energy nexus. Particularly in China, two of the biggest challenges are food security and climate change. With a growing population, urban migration and diminishing water, China's challenge will be to harmonise the relationship between industry, agriculture and people, all of which are competing for the same limited water supply. We have a long and proud history with China, including our acquisition of a Chinese firm, Maison Engineers and Contractors, in 2004. Our company is now renamed Woolley Parsons China, and we are currently the largest engineering, procurement and construction management firm uh, in China, with offices in Beijing, Shanghai, Tianjin, Nanjing, Xingu, uh, Shenyang and Hong Kong. We're also one of the largest Australian employers in China, employing some 2,800 people. Our approach to our business in China is based on the premise of China roots and global reach. This sees us work with foreign companies investing in China and with Chinese companies investing domestically and also overseas. Our customers include uh, multinationals such as Shell, ba BASF and Chevron and our Chinese customers include project developments, uh, developers such as PetroChina, CNOOC and EPC contractors such as Shanghai Electric. Specifically in wastewater, our work includes the Blue Star Xinhua uh, chemical project, the Shell Shanghai CPF project and the Oxy Togu mine project, just to name a few. We have also established China as one of our key global work sharing centres employing high value engineering, China sourcing and prefabrication and servicing of our projects around the world. In terms of success factors, uh, around 75% of our Chinese business comes from repeat customers. I believe that our track record gives us some good insights into working with global and local customers in China and to working with Chinese customers around the world. As we've said, uh, China's, China's economic transformation, especially since the late 70s, has been remarkable. During this period, the government has created market incentives, encouraged private enterprise, relax protectionist policies and open the government to greater foreign trade and investment. While these moves have accelerated China's transition as a developing nation, there is still more to do, particularly in the area of competition. There are still barriers to competition in the regulated energy and infrastructure sectors, particularly with awarding major projects. 
for international engineering companies, getting design accreditation in some sectors is still problematic. This continues to be an obstacle to working in the local market. Also, inconsistent and unclear government policy, codes and standards still hinder the ability to make decisions around long-term planning. However, it's pleasing to see efforts by the current Chinese leadership to address and lower barriers to competition. Other than competition, culture, language and communication continue to challenge international companies working in China. Chinese companies investing or contracting in Australia also face challenges, particularly around non-technical risks such as licensing and permitting, health and safety, environmental impact issues, access to labour and compliance with local standards and codes. Also, non-government authorities such as unions, community and lobby groups and NGOs can also impact the successful delivery of a project and therefore require consideration. China's urbanisation and the associated changing demographic profiling along with the massive industrial development offer extreme environmental and water associated challenges and opportunities. This will require government and the private sector to work together to minimise the impact and ensure sustainable growth for industry, agriculture and communities. And we'll now move on to our panel of industry uh, experts that who will uh, further explore these issues with you today. Thank you.